Hello, I'm Zachary Naldrit, he, him. Tonight, I will be playing Silverpaw, Keltenkind, Pal Paladin, Warlock. Also, he, him. I can be found on the Bird app and other various places on the internet as at Zach Rooms. Hi, I'm Kay. You can find me at Critical K with two Ks on the Bird app. And tonight, I will be playing Rex, he, him pronouns, a war bard or a bard lock, depending on your preference, for the artists. Excellent. Together on this stage, we are packed bound to Vorpal Tales, where you can witness dramatic tales of both terror and adventure every evening of every day. The repertoire of our show will have you calling Bravo, Brava, and Bravi at every curtain call. Come see all we have to offer at VorpalTales.com. You can find our current tales here on Twitch and our past tales at YouTube.com slash C slash Vorpal Tales. Helping produce this opera area are many most excellent organizations. Welcome to our newest partner, <coughs> uh, Norse Foundry, where you can have all of your dice needs fulfilled. Stay tuned later this month during our Vorpalversary for perhaps some awesome giveaways of sexy dice. Check them out. They have many, many metallic bone and gem awesomeness. Also, be sure to visit Gemhammer and Sons for many fine decks for your role-playing needs, as well as many other play aids, including their newest 5e supplement, Rolox Guide to Violence, to help your combat be more entertaining. Hitpoint Press carries a wide variety of excellent role-playing products, such as Humblewood, where you can play as a party of birds. Who doesn't want that? Quick, Sarah, what's your favorite bird? Uh, uh, Fear of Wax Wings. Fear of and soon you'll find us playing through their excellent module, Seeds of Decay. Speaking of Seeds of Decay, the Alchemy Virtual Tabletop is in Alpha and looking for playtesters. It is a slick new all-in-one virtual tabletop that we're very excited to start showing off on this show, hopefully next week, and later in the year, playing Seeds of Decay. If you're a fan of subscription boxes, we recommend you check out Dungeon Crate to get a box of monthly RPG goodies to help level up your TTRPG experience. On Monday, in Curse of Strahd, we will be showing off this month's box, because Patty has it. And finally, as always, a shout-out to our fine friends at Helmcast and Free League, who sponsor our show, because without their most excellent games, you would not experience many of your favorite tales. Be sure to check all of them out. Before we begin the overture, as the lights dim and you settle in, please remember that due to adult language and the violent nature of this story, we've rated it M for Mature, and we strongly encourage listener discretion. We make full use of consent in gaming and safety tools on this show, and hope you do the same. And now, we don't normally read the recap of the last session, but this is session one, and there is no recap. So first, how many of you wrote your letters? My yes. name Sylvia and Silverpaw. Mine's pink. Well, I, I I wrote it. I didn't like write it out and put it in an envelope. I didn't um, make it make it that far. Anyone it's, it's... in development? Uh, anyone who did not write your letter yet, you can do so during this session, and then you will have it ready for the next session because you're not going to die tonight. Probably. Aww. <laughs> but if you do, well, that's it. I'll be back next week. Direct you. <laughs> just, for the, just for the record, Tyler, uh, I was trying to write down the name of my patron uh, when you asked me my uh, favorite bird, and I almost wrote down um, "patron of cedar wax wings." <laughs> 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 Would be a lot nicer than what she actually is. It would be. And does anyone need anything completed on their characters? Besides the letter for some of you, I mean. <laughs> Otherwise, you are all good to go, yes? Excellent. Next question. How well does your... Go, go ahead. No, I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> what do you need completed? Nothing. I was just... I was going to clarify it needed to be like a letter home. Right? To Correct. someone. A goodbye letter home, in fact. To someone you care about and connected to. Got it. And the, the book says you should do it by hand. Dear Mother Dearest, <laughs> I am traveling far away. <laughs> um, next. Mommy Dearest. 
how well do you know each other? It could be as a whole, or you could make interpersonal connections two or three at a time. Once you solve that, we will dis discuss what you may or may not know about each other. And then I will tell you how our tale begins. I'm a D4. Or D8. One of the two. Well, if any of you uh, fancy the pub, you'd be familiar with uh, Sylvia for her obnoxiously loud bagpipes that uh, she uses to break up conversations when people get too rowdy. <laughs> they try to talk over her and she, they try to talk angrily at each other and she just goes, Doot. Stop shouting. Uh, for those of you who are true D&D nerds, if it helps you figure this out, you are level 15 characters originally native to O'Earth, which is, of course, Greyhawk.
armor. So silver paw makes armor. There's another uh, Kaladin kill that would make a a Kaladin kind that would make do like leather working, uh, and just various different what? types of like armor and survivor. Well, I, I would probably need like custom equipment like made here and there for like alchemical and magical purposes. So possibly that's how I know you and your family. Um, Sounds good. So like I would have like my staff um, like stop by and, you know, I would have certain requirements like a seven foot tube filled with alchemical liquid. Yeah, I can work. Mm. I'll run out the mill stuff. Oh, just the cloning chamber. You know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is. It, it's fine. Just we'll see. the scenario will be happening. Well, I always thought to myself, why should there only be one of me? Of course you Why did. should there only be one of you? They're, they're, you're a lovely, you're a lovely, uh, is person the right word for you? Uh, you're, you're a lovely whatever you are, and there sh- the world should be just littered with you. It, w- it would make it a much brighter place. Um, Kuzma, well, who the hell else could keep up in a conversation with you but you? But, but you, yeah. Um, oh, there's the map. I'm like, where's the map? Um... Uh, my character would probably also be the most charismatic out of the his folk. So setting up shop at any of the bridge markets might might be the one out there, particularly at Patrons Pass, which is looks like it would probably be the first one people entering the city would come to. Hey, friend, you look like you could use a new set of armor. Look at all of my wares. Give you a discount for the first time being in the city. That kind of thing. Okay. But better because he's more charismatic than I am. So, but for anybody who is not originally of the realm who came into the city, could have met that way as well. I would say Hanir meets most people through um, a little joint effort tavern he has um, that is closer. It's not at the beginning of the city. It's more closer to um, the end of the city near the Well of Souls. Um, He has a little uh, tavern. Um, One of him has a tavern called the Changing Tides. and depending on the day of the week is who he decides to be in the bar um and it's kind of like not a locals only um but it definitely plays up more of the themes of the um of that side um especially with like patrons and um there's also just a shit ton of mirrors in this tavern. Oh, okay. I would go there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I also happen to roll a one on my d4. So, oh. so um, everyone knows Hanir. <laughs> everyone knows Hanir. Um, <laughs> does uh, this bar uh, that you sort of have this stake in, does it allow singers or, you know, how is the entertainment done there? Um, he, he lets all sorts come in. Um, he's like, if you can keep my attention, you can sing or perform in the bar. So I, how would you feel if, so Rex is, is relatively new in town, uh, has not been there long, but maybe he's made a distinct impression on you. Uh, and kept you, you know, around. He also really enjoys all the mirrors in the bar. 
um, and the reflective surfaces and like the, the fun with that that can be had for making performances more enhanced with light play and other things like that, that he can have fun with there. And I think a place that goes to that feels like the kind of place that would have interesting people. And that's all Rex is, is looking for is interesting people, interesting stories, interesting events. And the air is definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. Who does he know you as then? Um, let's see, that's an excellent question. Where's my desk? <laughs> I rolled a hundred percent. On a, on a um uh he knows uh Hanir as like his noble self um okay. the one that he prances around his best friend with um that's the one that you've um met initially and have just happenstance the one he always runs the one he always runs into uh when he comes into the bar Okay, what is this person's name and pronouns? Okay, why do you do this to me? You should have this. I'm not going to take this as a K you should do to me moment. <laughs> there um, are many of those. This is not one of them. Name uh, his name is uh, Salvador. Salvador? Mm -hmm. uh, he, him, and what uh, race are they? What do they look like? Uh, he is uh, more human. He's more human. He is human. Um, a, a darker skin complexion, beautiful tan, um, uh, striking um, green eyes. Oh, um, this but... was this was Tall Rex. <laughs> yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. Awesome. Yeah. So then I know South the door, and I am smitten with your bar because it is the most interesting place here to start and find other people who are interesting. Who's next? Okay. Uh, I rolled uh, a one and a two. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Sylvia likes to, well, she's only, she just got here. She's maybe only been in Yonkath for maybe a month at this point. Uh, and uh, she doesn't really know what she's doing here yet. Uh, she like has this little voice in her head that keeps telling her like, oh, this is the perfect place to be. And she's like, but why? Uh, and so I think that she believes that she and Hamir are like destined to do something together because uh, I think I, I think Sylvia was at the bar uh, that I can't remember the name of. Not changing tides. A hole the, in the wall. The hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we got really drunk together one night and you held Sylvia's hair. <laughs> and she just will not leave you alone now. So... You may have like been like, this person is so naive and impressionable, but also like very charismatic and magic. Perfect. So no, and Nira's like, I regret being a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, I think I think it's more of like it's more of like you figured out how impressionable she is and how like good she is with like her music and her charismatic charm. And so you may have like sent her on like little like not fool's errands but like sent her to like shake people down that owe you money but like because she's like very sweet and stuff like they they don't feel like threatened by her of like hey can you give this guy his money now please thank you <laughs> so you've been like 
cinnamon bunned to death. Yeah, she just like cuted them into handing over their wallets for you. I love it. Uh, and then the other uh, one I rolled was for Kuzma. Uh, how long has Kuzma been in Young Cat and what's he been up to? Uh, well, Kuzma lives an aristocratic lifestyle, but also travels around. So I assume I have some like property here, possibly like a townhome or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what? I said, yeah, I'm good with that. At level 15, you should all have a keep finger quote so you can have whatever kind of property you want. Except you right. know, no full castles. Yeah, so I've got a like a townhouse, uh, kind of like with a garden and like a wall. Um, it's a bit private. I'm uh, part of a gathering of like-minded people. Um, we often have parties at this townhouse. Um, it's a uh, I don't really know the best way to put it. It's kind of like a, a hedonistic death cult. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to put it, I think. Yeah. Um, so we have, you know, parties there. Uh, so maybe you, you know, may have been invited to that party as long as you leave your bagpipe at the door. <laughs> That's fine, because she also has a dulcimer. Better. That's better. <laughs> dulcimer is much better than a bagpipe at these kind of parties. We don't want people to get the wrong idea. Yeah. Maybe like when the party is over, you can use the bagpipes. Yeah, well, she can reanimate things, so maybe she, like, reanimated some of the people that were, like, so drunk they passed out. But reanimate? Like... Well, her, uh, what's the spell? It's one of my bard of, it's one of my creation spells. Do you mean, like, make their body, you know, their bodies or their clothing move? Something like that, yeah. It's, um, oh man, what's the name of the dumb spell? Yeah, animate object, I think. I think it's I think I'm thinking of animate object. I can animate a dead body, you know. It's technically an object at that point, right? Um As a necromancer, yeah. I'm gonna say don't do that. Okay, <laughs> alright, you know. I'll say or the other please, please don't animate, you know, any of my guests. Do do not the guest. Um Okay, well I think that Sylvia would be a little freaked out by that, but you know, that's chill. Uh, she like came back and everyone was dead. Uh, no, I mean, we don't kill people. You just called yourself a hedonistic death cult. Well, after they die, you know, then we, you know, animate their bodies, but they don't die at the parties. Gosh, oh, okay. I don't think we are. They walked uh, the door dead. <laughs> it was okay. It's, it's, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> Like there's like a little like so, there's like a little like height measure at the door. It's like you must be this dead to enter. I'll uh, I'll I'll give you the pamphlet and I'll describe all the details to you later. <laughs> just just nobody dies at the parties. They're just parties. All right. But there are dead just people. parties. Yeah. All right. Well then, yeah. Like I've been to one of your parties uh, once. Uh, you know, it was it was an interesting time, and I'll have to I'll have to think further on it. But she went once. You kind of freak her out now, but you know, every time she like sees you, she's like, "Oh, hi, how are you doing?" Six feet away from me, please. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for Sylvia, at least. You're, um, you're well, next. Yeah, well, well, I know Silverpaw and his family. Um, and Rex, you're a, a bard? I'm a bard warlock, but I'm a, an entertainer by trade. Okay, well, uh, would you be, you know, would you be interested in entertaining at, you know, one of my parties? I think so. I think anything with the word hedonist in it is definitely for him. Perfect. Okay, so there, there, there we are. You don't play bagpipes, do you? Uh, no, he mainly plays, well, he mainly sings, but he also plays, like, the viol, the lyre, the lute. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I would say the viol is probably his main instrument. Much more normal. Much more. <laughs> Much more normal. But he also, like, 
it's like two cellos level of, of like viol play. It's not necessarily always traditional. There's a lot of, of striking in it. Yeah, like I like the Cello Brothers uh, Thunderstruck cover. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Also, I'd like to point out, it's like Rachel said, no one dies at Disneyland. No one dies at Disneyland. <laughs> Oh god, what about that later? Okay, yeah, so I know Hamir and I sort of know Kuzma. I don't I, I think Rex drank I think I think Rex is maybe since he's so new in tone only entertained at one of your parties and probably got so like shit face drunk that he like half remembers it. So he like vaguely remembers you. Yeah, you don't drink the punch directly out of the cloning chamber. I don't know what that is, but this punch points to the punch from the cloning chamber is top-notch. <laughs> <laughs> like, this stuff is good. Sylvia will hold Sylvia will hold your hair. Uh Rex does not need his his hair held. He 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 holds his own. It's also too short for that, but he appreciates the gesture. Then he probably hits on you. Who wouldn't? Two two bards in a room. It's zero feet apart because they're both <laughs> extremely horny and charismatic. Yeah, <laughs> charismatic. <laughs> Just casually popping buttons. Um, my notes to Sylvia. When I held her hair, I totally didn't use mage hand. <laughs> That reminds me of this, uh, that reminds me of this comic of like a woman like throwing up into the toilet and like her friend has like stuck like a glove onto the end of a broom and is like using it to pat her back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that's sort of how some of us know each other. Unless does anyone else want any more or with like a connection to someone else that's not stated? Well, um, Zach didn't roll his dice. I did. I, I got it. Did. I did. He got oh, near. Did? Yeah, got one for Hanir. They hang out at the same local bar. Yep. All right. Okay. A lot of us rolled ones, so we'll see how we're just getting our ones out of the way. Is what I'm hoping. Yeah. It's just because I am so important. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's so simple. <laughs> okay. So Tyler, <laughs> up connections are set, and you know, I think you've done a good job of. Uh, Showing off your connections to each other. So I think we can begin the story. Ooh. Time is an interesting concept. Invented by mortals. They toil away inside their little bubble. Confined in its boundaries. Tirelessly tracking the ever-turning sun. They note the passing moments. They add the days, the weeks, the years. In the extra-dimensional planes, however, there is no time. Everything converges, flowing like a stream of consciousness marked only by the passing of prominent souls. Sundials can't show you much when every elemental plane spins light and shadow in its own way, you see. And so I, Maghoro, a being you might call a patron of time, saw my chance. A niche I could carve in the wall between planes where I could bring the tedious notion of time out into the planes as a saleable commodity. My packs gave focus to entities far removed from the mortal gaze and helped snap several primordials back into reality. In exchange for helping my marketplace, I've started recruiting those who don't mind nipping a little time from their world and giving it to me. A few breaths at the end of life. A missed connection between lovers. Or even ensuring... An arrow ends a life years before their time. My warlock servants, the Evermore, are few in number now, but I'm always looking for new recruits. They come in all shapes and sizes, rich or poor, shade land born or no. But all of them have seen the crack in time where I reside. While wizards and sorcerers use their magic to merely distort the perception of time, my warlocks have the power to bend it to their will like no other. This is the gift I give when striking a pact. Anyone who crosses paths with the Evermores can become my servant, an eternal subject, bound to feed me time forever. 
Old or young, it matters not. Anyone can offer me their life's precious time and be blessed with my power. I have an eternity to bargain, after all. The story will begin in Hinnier's Bar, where you've all been called together for a job. For one reason or another, you all need some cash, even at level 15. So let's get that out of the way first. Why are you suddenly in need of a large influx of cash for a shady person who has a shady questionable mission? We're talking thousands of gold payout here. I don't think Rex actually needs the money. I think it's the shady deal that entices him. Uh, something about this is going to create something interesting and something different. And he promises his friend that he's going to show him all the places and all the things that all the worlds and spaces have to offer. And this is just another opportunity. So the money's just kind of like a, okay, I'll take that. So no shit, there I was. Uh, there was a family in need, and I gave them everything I had, my poor bleeding heart. I just gave them thousands of gold coins, and then suddenly I remembered that I have to feed my donkey. So uh, now I'm here. Yeah, She's that a sounds about right. She's, she's a sweet girl. She doesn't eat a lot, but I do. I need to feed myself, too. Uh, well, Kuzma lives a very expensive lifestyle, and um, clone chambers aren't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> clone chambers don't pay for themselves. No, they're about 5,000 gold cut a piece, actually. Paneer and Silverball, what you got? Paneer is prepping for a task from his patron. And while he could probably illusion the things that he needs um having them purchasing them is probably better for the success of such thing silver paws nephew came to town on visiting you know and you know it's family so you gotta you accept family and you love family Sometimes family breaks a uh, several thousand gold piece that you were working on. <laughs> and then you, know, it, you don't have the materials to repair or replace it. And you have to start over, but you don't have the, the you've already, you have to, you know, come up with the gold to buy the materials again. Makes sense to me. That that off world ore is is not cheap. Other other realm ore, hard to come by. Okay. Um. Remind me again. Did you put your your bar on the Shadeland side or the Feywild? Um. um. Is that for me or Silverpaw? Hinier, this is Hinier's bar that you have bar. an investment in. Um, if you're tailoring it to your character's personality, probably Feywild. Okay, the Feywild side. Okay. The streets outside are noisy, hustle and bustle. It's a blustery fall day, at least in the morning. By afternoon, it's a warm spring evening. And by night, it's probably cold and windy and might snow a little. Uh, chaos. Noise, confusion, like any big city. But in a good way. It's actually kind of relaxing somehow. That's what it's like outside the bar. Inside the bar, it's a riot of color and colorful personalities. There may have already been two bar fights tonight. Uh, luckily, uh, the 
Other people who are invested in this bar also have uh, high-level magical power and have invested in a oh shit button that essentially fires anti-magic fields all over the place when necessary to shut down any kind of fight that might destroy the bar and or half the block. So, it is a relatively safe place to meet for such things. It is neutral ground for colorful personalities. It's also a safe place to duck into and grab a drink when uh, it's late at night and warlocks are on the prowl for uh, new souls to bargain with, like yours. So, you're all sitting around a table in a dark corner, like Aragorn in Lord of the Rings at the beginning, waiting for your shady uh, future employer to show up that you do not know who it is. The scene is yours. So then little Ricky decides that he wants to play with the new arrows that I bought him uh, when we were taking a tour of the city and uh, stopped at the market over at Stone Lake. So he just start, starts shooting them all over. And he's not a good shot. This, this was not a, a bow made for a Calden kind that he has. Um, his, his claws caught on the bowstring. One thing leads to another, and somehow the chain breaks and just hot molten liquid just pours all over the piece. It's a tragedy. So, anyways, Sam, that was my Tuesday. How's how how's how y'all y'all been? <clears throat> So I think as you're telling this story, Rex is just lightly playing his viol, like sad violin music to <laughs> accompany this this story. Um, Hanir had stepped away momentarily. You see him behind the bar where he just like lightly peruses like the top shelf, the top of the top shelf. And a bottle slowly floats down to his hand. Um, and he has like, one, two, three, four, five glasses follow behind him, and he sets a pristine bottle of something expensive um, in the middle of the table, and all the glasses go around to everyone. Five glasses of Sneaky Spring prepare themselves for you, a cocktail local to the area that includes blood orange gin, vodka, cranberry juice, lemonade, and lemon juice. That. Very high-end gin and vodka, of course. It's um, silky. Go on. Uh, why don't we drink our sorrows away? Sylvia had her head on the table. And she like held out her hand for the glass and she goes, Oh, I don't know if I can do another one. Last night was a real rough on me, love. The smell though oh, is Sylvia. somehow very enticing. Almost like you want to drink it even if you don't want to. That's true for all of you. Oh, Sylvia, you know you always have one more left in you. Whatever your favorite scent is, is what this drink smells like. It's a favorite food scent. Sylvia takes a, she like wafts it under her nose. She goes, no one could make it like she did. And uh, she'll toast to the party. Say, for what comes next, yes? Adventure. Does anyone not drink? Oh no. Rex is gonna take a minute and Before see what happens. <laughs> they all look very satisfied and happy. A little bit daydreamy. Silverpaw just... is. Go, for Go it. ahead. Go ahead. And uh, specifically, gonna... Kuzma's cheeks flush. The paleness fades. Hmm. Rex will loll his head to the side and just friend should i drink it they look happy would it make you happy if i drank it you should drink it and bring some to us as a sacrifice you know where which you would mm -hmm. so i'll take a sip of half of it i'll drink half while while rex is having this conversation sylvia is leaning over to try and touch kuzma and she's like oh you got some rose tea i love he tries like touch his cheek the drink fulfills you as if you had had eight hours of sleep, even though none of you start with fatigue, and in Kuzma's place as if you had fed on some delicious, delicious dreams. 
Uh, also, you all gain one inspiration point. This is a D8 inspiration point. In case you missed it, uh, Hineer, D8 inspiration point, and it's as if you had slept for a whole night. Awesome sauce. Somewhere in the back of the bar, a bartender glares at the back of Hineer, looking at Hineer's tap, going, whatever, it strikes down the next thing. The tap is very long. I'm gonna empty my side flask and just pour the other half of this drink into it. The Red Hearth is the place, which we will get into later. Mm -hmm. After we do our intro adventure, where one can make sacrifices to one's patrons. Also, fun side note mm -hmm. for the players and audience who don't have a copy of Red Opera, all of these local cuisines, they have recipes you can make IRL for them, including the drink we just described. Sounds good. Want one? <laughs> <clears throat> so Silverpaw will try to kind of uh, just take a sip but it doesn't quite work uh, that way because he, he's a bear folk uh, if it's a, a normal glass it's there's going to be a little mess um, okay. I think Kinnear would have known to have a special glass for a silver pot. <laughs> <clears throat> Extra wide, heavy base, no umbrella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it have like special bear straws? Yeah, bear <laughs> straw. <laughs> Made out it's of more paper. Of a, it's more of a lapping than a sipping. Mm. Yeah, fair. So okay. a bowl. Yes. Sylvia puts down a napkin under the underneath silver punch. Like I gotcha. Oh, that's what it kind of you love. That's a good friend. Oh yes, happy to help anyone in need. So um, tell me, did you turn this uh, this relative of yours into mittens and just not sell those to make up the cash difference? Oh no no he he's so he's gone back to his mother. Um, I mean, he's, he, I, of course, you know, I, I had to, after he cleaned up all the arrows and picked them up, because he's going to have to practice, because, you, know, you know, what else is he going to do? He's, I mean, he's got to get better at it. Oh, yes. Only one way to get better. There will be a lot of safe rabbits around the village tonight, though. <laughs> Suddenly, the temperature drops. Anybody have tech magic as a cantrip or the ability to use it at will as a warlock? Tech sure magic? Does. The, the tech magic is not a. Oh, detect cantrip. magic. Detect, I heard, yes. I heard right. tech magic and I was just like, what? Uh, I have detect magic, but it's not mm -hmm. a cantrip. Okay. Can I just Eldritch Blast it? Yeah, I have it as a ritual. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I have. The uh, nope. I have detect uh, dispel magic. So no to Silverpaw, no to Hineer, no to Sylvia, correct? Correct. So Rex and Kuzma, you can feel incoming conjuration magic, but it's not hostile. I just look at Kuzma and I say, "Someone's coming." Did you invite a friend? Well, it's. Oh no! I only make people come on purpose. Whoa! Sylvia says that loud. <laughs> and Rex just absolutely smiles. Ooh, know, we, got, says, we got some badass over here! <laughs> the, the air shimmers and out steps two people. One, a battle hardened, weather looking elf man who's missing the pointed tip from his right ear. The other is a dwarven woman, eyes hidden behind black circular glasses, chewing on an unlit cigar absent mindedly, dressed like a pirate. She stumbles out. He walks out smoothly. Bloody goddamn hell, says the dwarf every time. And then leans over the side behind Kuzma's chair and wretches. I hate traveling that way. <clears throat> the elf gentleman little... clears his throat and says, yes, quite, and seats himself directly across from Hineer. 
I'm gonna look at Kuzma, smile, and just snap my fingers, and sort of like green, gold, and purple glitter shimmer, and the vomit just sort of dissipates. Mm, that's a good trick, love, says the dwarf woman. Flops down next to you, slaps your knee extra hard. I like you. I like you. I'll vomit breath. <clears throat> fix that also. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm assuming you are our special guest. He says to the elven Quite. Person. You can call me Quibben. Quibben? Yes. Perhaps we should create some privacy. He snaps his finger and, uh, Eldritch runes flare to life around the table for a second and then dissipate. Very toxic green color. Now we can speak. So, it's a job. Always straight to business with you. How about a drink first? Grabs Silver Paws. Massive mug that he was lapping out of and chucks it to Dwarfen Woman. Or chugs it. So, what be your names? Starting with you, cutie, pointing at Kuzma. Kuzma. Kuzma Volodymyr. Turns and looks at Hanir. Uh, Hanir Andothis. Looks at Silverpaw. I'm Silverpaw. Nice to meet you, friend. Looks at Rex. Just Rex. Looks at Sylvia. Oh, um, you can call me Sylvia Quirrell. I'm uh, not from around here. Pleased to meet you all. My name is Corin. Grabs Silverpaw's hand and gives you a firm, bear-like shake. Always good to meet a new friend. Oh, I don't know if we'll be friends, but you never know. Silverpaw is everyone's friend. Ah, yes. I can see that. Winks at Kuzma. I'd be, I'd be their friend. <laughs> the elf clears his throat in the moment of awkward silence. So, if we talk work, let's talk adventure. Oh, it will be that. It will be that. Smirks. He looks at you expectantly, like like you had more to like he thought you had more to say, Rex. Well, if you're ready, we're ready. Huh, it need needs to be interesting. Adventure. Excellent. You see, something weird, and I use that word with all the emphasis you might think for this town. Looks around, is it happening? Something very strange. There seems to be problems with time. The dwarf interrupts. Last week, there were three bloody Tuesdays in a goddamn row. What do, who the fuck needs three Tuesdays? Jesus. Slams more of Silverpaw's drink. Quite. Yes, quite. Tuesdays is, is taco night. Uh, <laughs> at that little place by the little helper, it's a it's great. I love Tuesdays. While while Silverpaw's talking about it, Sylvia's just kind of like nodding grumbly, like, yeah, I don't need any more Tuesdays. Don't need any more hangovers than one. <laughs> Not even damn bloody damn ladies' night. So the Legionnaires and you all that are warlocks or have warlock, uh aspirations would cringe at that knowing that the uh, black legionnaires are all former warlocks who have somehow had their packs broken and make it their mission in life to stop warlocks from making packs and or break the packs of other warlocks and if the warlock in question doesn't agree put him down like dogs have not gone out and recruited a band of adventurers who think they were tricked by their by their patrons and promised them uh, the ability to break their packs if they would go 
and stop this nonsense from happening. However, to put this, the Dwarven woman interrupts again. They bloody fucking suck, and they're causing trouble everywhere and making a hot mess. We need you to find them, catch them, stop them, and then actually fix the problem. Sounds like fun. Where do I sign? What else? Oh, that's it. Really? Mm hmm Stop the morons. Fix time. You know, if that's just Tuesday for you, you're going to get lots of Tuesdays to do it. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> the elf leans forward very seriously and says, 15,000 gold each. Seven now. The rest on completion. And an extra thousand gold for every head of the Black Legionnaire you bring me. Mm. Done. So Sylvia leans over to Kinnear and says, I'll give you mine. I'm like, what? My heads. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. She goes, <clears throat> looking out for your love and like jabs him in the elbow. So, wait, uh... So the Legionnaires hired people to do something, and we're so stopped the people that they hired, or the Legionnaires? Yes. I have a question. Um, after we're paid for the heads, can we have them back? <laughs> the dwarf arches an eyebrow. Oh, I like you more. The elf says, I don't care what you do with the heads, just show me proof. So, uh, I mean, just this is for the table, I guess. Um, I would be willing to buy your heads as well once we paid for the heads. So, just. Sure. Can, like, just. I can sell them twice. Okay, fair. Fair. I mean, I'd give them maybe half price for what they're offering, but still you're getting paid extra. <laughs> That's acceptable to me. Oh, very good. Do you have things that aren't gold for the heads? Who, me? No. I mean, if you do too, sure, but I'm asking our friend here. Didn't... Corin, do you have anything fun? You look like you have fun things. What do you consider fun? Heads? Mm. They weren't talking to me. <laughs> Something different, something unique, something that's not so paltry. I mean, everyone pays you in gold. The dwarf looks at him, and he looks at her, and you can tell from their facial tics that they're having a telepathic conversation. The dwarf smirks and shrugs as if, sure, why the fuck not? He leans forward and looks at Rex, but he's talking to all of you. Sure, bring me at least five Legion Airheads. And I'll throw in a special reward to boot. Access to the World of Souls for one hour. What the heck is that? Uh, you as the characters, not necessarily players, would know the World of Souls is the place where all of the patrons in existence can communicate with the world. Mm. It's the most Something sought after else. coveted place in uh, Yon Kath. The access okay. is restricted by the <laughs> Nar king, reaches by the over. King. <laughs> with a mage hand and flicks the back of Rex's ear when he says mm -hmm. no. <laughs> mm. Well, that does sound intriguing. Friend, do you want to go? A different voice answers. Uh, almost like a cacophony of the male and female and other. Yes, you should come visit us, Rex. Okay, yeah, then I'll do that one. That works. Five heads. Can I get it? And it, if so... It's like multiplication. So if I bring you 10 heads, two hours. Only one. Even I have limited access. Mm, okay, you only get five heads. Let's go. How do, where do we start? What do you know? Sylvia? Yes. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, I suppose. What's Kinnear. the worst that can happen? Do you agree? I already agreed. Kuzma? Certainly, yes. Silverpaw? 
I mean, yeah, it sounds like the, these folks start, you know, up and causing trouble. I mean, I enjoy the excitement of the city, but if they're doing bad, they got to be stopped. Excellent. Shall we make a pact? I um, I have one extra um, possible kicker for this. Yes. Um, could I be paid 20,000 gold? <laughs> and no access to the well? No, no. Just 20,000 gold and the well and all that stuff. He just gives you a look. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Well, I have... Uh, I will roll persuasion, but I'll also say... Because I have... Um, I think I have something that might be of interest to you that I can give you access to for an hour as well. And what would that be? <laughs> I just stared at him. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it. Oh wow. If it if it is what I'm thinking. Wow. It's real fun at parties. Uh yeah, that's a natural to me. <laughs> it takes him a minute to get it, but when he does, his pupils dilate in a real slow smile. Deal. Okay. It may be a very long hour, though. As you notice that the symbol of his patron is the patron of time. Yeah, that's fine. I have a similar actor. <laughs> <laughs> the like parking is struck. We are terrible people. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of a lawful good in this game, in this particular setting. Fair. Okay. Laughs and snowflake. <laughs> Cough cinnamon. Cough and cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. Cinnamon. He whips up a contract. Kuzma, your contract says uh, his special hour, can't, he has the right to pass it off to a person of his choosing, and then the dwarf's name is signed under it. That's fair. Mm, I want something extra, too. What do you have to offer? Mm. Nothing is free in Yon Koth. Let's see. Mm. And he goes. He leans forward. His bag. I could take some of your time in exchange for extra pay. No, I need that to show someone things. Oh, I know. I'll write you your own song. He looks bored. You can still make a persuasion check, but the DC is high. I am so offended right now. Rex, <laughs> just so offended. Yes. <laughs> this is unacceptable. Uh, and I like, I'm going to lean in and say, you don't know what you're missing. And you know, and, and yeah, I'll roll that persuasion, Jess, and we'll Do be it. bringing out the Satine dice. Yay. And you got a D8 inspiration. And I got a D8 inspiration. Okay. I'm going to use the D8 inspiration. That's an eight. So that would be a... Oh, wait, I have my plus. Oh, yeah, that's a thing on my character sheet. <laughs> so this is persuasion. So that's a plus 15. So that's 34. Mm, DC was 25. Mm. Fine, fine. No, if you don't want it, you don't have it. I'll write it for her. But I still want something. Uh, she says, I'm sorry, love. He makes the deals. Um, wow, Rex is negotiating. Hanir would like to read the contract okay this was liver paw okay. yeah both of you uh make intelligent saving throws <laughs> oh my goodness um i rolled a nat 20 <laughs> okay if that matters uh for a total of 25 okay i think one of my things is a plus to saving throws well, let me check Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Perhaps if your song is as good as you promise, Bard, 
I can use it as leverage in the castle. No, no. Oh, yeah, so whenever someone within 10 feet of me has to make a saving throw, the creature gains a bonus to the saving throw equal to my charisma modifier. Yeah. Well, Henir gets that, doesn't need it, got a natural 20, but still gets it. Woo-hoo. So that means anybody at the table has a plus five. That's so lit. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Pretty pod champ, if I do say so myself. So that was an intelligence saving throw? Yep. So I uh, got a 15. 15. Uh, looks fine to you, Silverpaw. Uh, since my patron is uh, the time patron, does the name pop up? It does, in several places. Now, I will tell you, even though you didn't make the save of the 15... <laughs> that uh, there is no time fuckery in this contract. All right. Rex. Mm Mm-hmm. You accept the new deal? Sure. He looks mortally offended, but he's looking at the the readers and he's like, come here, do I sign? Is it right? You only read your contract in here. Yeah, there's there's a separate contract for each one of us, I'm assuming. That's correct. Now, Hanir, your contract looks perfectly fine at first glance, but on second pass, there's cleverly hidden in the wording a clause about how once you sign, you're gayest to the mission. Do you want to say that to me in English? Uh compelled to complete it no matter what no no backing out magically forced like yeah, no. mind control sort of but not really yeah no so make a deception check deception sure I'll throw my bardic inspiration on top of this okay <clears throat> 36. Okay. Uh, fast talk commences between Hanir and the elf, Quiven, and you're all mightily impressed, even you bards, with this fast talk, but Hanir, you get the upper hand, and your contract is now repaired. What was wrong with yours? Why didn't you want to sign it as it was? Your new contract has a clause of an extra 10,000 gold piece payout if you don't help them with theirs. <laughs> he spelled my name wrong. <laughs> mm, that doesn't smell. I can right. get roll. Yeah, yeah, like that. Do does, it. That that seems fishy AF. Do it. I need him here to roll uh, deception, but don't DM me your result in here. Don't say it out loud. And uh, nobody tell okay. me your results until I see in here's uh, number. I'll tell you when. <laughs> mm. Silver Paw, uh, when he near says that, is going to go back over his contract to make sure Silver Paw is spelled right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rex and Sylvia, you can give me your results now. 26. 26. Rex? Five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, that's what it was. It was so all about wrong. the name. You're guessing there must have been something magical about the name, because, you know, that's a thing. True names can get you in a lot of trouble, and uh, Hanir is, yeah. is, a ty- is a tiefling, so seems legit. Maybe they were trying mm-hmm. to use it against him. Uh, okay. Silverpaw, your name is correct. <laughs> Silverpaw signs it. I'm so sorry, Silverpaw. <laughs> Silverpaw, you sign it. You, it is not a gay ass on yours. There's something different for all of you. Um, Sylvia, like, she kind of, like, sits there and she's, like, watching everyone go down the line uh, while they're signing. And when it finally comes down to her, she looks at it and she goes, am I allowed to do this twice? The dwarf says, what do you mean? Twice. Uh, sorry, sorry, that wasn't for you. 
and Sylvia kind of like looks up like, are you there, God? It's me, Sylvia. <laughs> uh, what is it you want to do twice? Uh, Sylvia is not a warlock, so she, like when they said, can we make a pact? She's thinking, oh, like, that's just what people say here when they're being like, we're going to write a binding contract. Okay, but she still asks, like, am I allowed to do this twice? Yes. Okay. Yes, you are. All right. She goes, okay. <laughs> this is not secretly the time patron in disguise. Do not worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, later. Yeah, she, like, she, like, signs it, and she has, like, cute little, like, actually, she has, like, her own pen. She has, like, her own little, little like, feather <laughs> quill. Of course she does. And she, like, signs it in perfect, like, cursive, and she, like, dots her eye with a heart. You signed it with your own pen, you say? Yes. Your loophole does not catch you. All right. Kuzma, that leaves you. Uh, yeah, is there anything obviously wrong with mine, I guess? I just, like, read through it. I'm not going to, you know, sign it. I'm just blind. But... Deception check. Uh, what is it? Perception or deception? Deception. deception. Or insight, whichever's better. Um... And for Sylvia, using your own pen bypass the catch in yours. Uh, can I read mine also? Yes. Like, I want to check, check if my name is wrong, but... <laughs> <laughs> they, they messed up in ears. <laughs> natural 20! Yeah, I rolled a natural one. A natural <laughs> one? Yeah. Kuzma, everything's fine. Alright, yeah, I sign it. Okay. Rex. Yeah. There is a clause in yours. If the royalty in the palace enjoy the song that you write for this guy, you're required to write them a new song every quarter for the rest of your natural life. Um. Hmm, and if every consecutive song must be better than the previous. Ah. Uh, hmm. I mean, every song I write is phenomenal, but this won't do. And I just like point. All right. Deception. Deception? You already gave me a net 20. I'm going to give you a break. Kate Welch dice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be two seconds. Okay. That is deception. That'll be 24. Okay. Uh, you come to an impasse in the form of you can't convince him to leave nothing out but he also can't convince you trick you into something terrible so you can set a negative condition for yourself and I will approve or deny hmm. what would your character be annoyed by that would not cripple your character or otherwise doom them to a terrible fate You can have my ear tips if I don't succeed. Okay. That's you're pretty intense. One. Sold. Yes, he is. I'll give you my tip. After you sign the contract, you are able to see uh, what your flaw is. So, in the case of Silverpaw, uh, you are now his armorer for the rest of your natural life. For free! In the case of Kuzma, lifetime VIP access to the sex cult. I mean the death cult. I mean the cult cult. <laughs> I mean, he could have had that anyway. <laughs> uh, you regret that when you see how annoying of a VIP customer this guy is. But anyways. <laughs> well, to be to be fair, the clause in the sex cult is you can come to the sex cult as long as you're alive, but once you're dead, <laughs> then you work. <laughs> then you work. <laughs> Everyone loses. Okay. You agree to take the job. They give you the lead they have, which is recently an evermore, that's the patron, warlock named Sarvish Dunn was killed by his brethren. His imp familiar, Wretch, survived the encounter and is drowning his sorrows at a bar across the way on the Shadeland side of town, the little helper. 
Problem is, these so-called heroes are searching for this imp too. Hmm. Can we spread disinformation about where the imp might be? You can, yes, you can split your efforts. Some of you stall the heroes and or try to kill them. Some of you get to the imp first, however you want to do it. And you have all of break to think about it, because this is...
the gloves of thievery. Roll a d10. Roll a d10. Ooh, magical resplendent. A ten! A ten! A ten! A ten! Ring of the Warlock. When you kill a creature with a spell, if you're wearing this ring, the spell slot is not expended. Ooh. However, um. if you are dropped to zero, your soul goes into the ring. <laughs> you don't die. You can stay alive. Soulless. Which is we, which we will roleplay as the effect of a uh, null emotion spell. As if constantly under the effect of calm emotions, but twice as potent. Ooh, that would not be fun for Rex. Okay, so he finds this ring and just slips it into his pocket. Okay. You kind of wonder, though, perhaps for future reference, why he wasn't wearing this. Well, so I'm going to identify it later. But yes. right now it's just snatch and grab. Okay. Just a blink. All right. So, now, in the immortal words of the Ghostbusters, choose the form of the Destroyer. What monster type do you each want your buddy to be? We'll start with an ear. Aberration, beast, celestial, construct, dragon, elemental, fey, fiend, giant, uh, monstrosity, ooze, plant, or undead. I want a dragon. Okay. I'm gonna Mount. regret this later. Mount or companion. Me? No, this is still for Hanir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I'll mount Sylvia. Um, <laughs> knew that was coming. Um, I'll take um, mount. Okay. I broke it. Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia.exe has stopped working. <laughs> One moment, I must make this weird for you. What? <laughs> Are you gonna do like an ooze dragon like I saw in that YouTube video that I was uh, watching the other day? I mean, I am using <laughs> that book, so maybe. It's like a mercury dragon, it's really creepy. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> Whilst I look this up, Silverpaw, choose the form of your destroyer. Celestial. Celestial, okay. Companion or mount? Companion. I was about Companion. to say, what is large enough for Silverpaw to mount? Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're saying okay or K like my name? Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh, go ahead and roll a d20 in here. Hmm. Hey, Captain. Nine. 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 Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. All right. You have. Young is how this will suffice. You have, as a minder, at this stage anyways. Not that. Uh, <laughs> a juvenile, uh, young, not juvenile, young emerald dragon. Emerald? Ooh. Holy shnikes. <laughs> the breath weapon of which is disorientation. <laughs> Psychic dissonance. <laughs> We could go wrong. Okay. Awesome. I believe I heard Celestial. You yes. did. From Silverpaw. And you wanted a companion, not a mount. Yes. He would Why just use both? Summon Steed for, for a mount. What do you want? A Pegasus or a Unicorn? <laughs> They're not going to be standard. So, wings or horn is really what you're after here. Wings. Okay. What's your alignment? You can DM it to me if you don't want to say it out loud. 
Uh, the good. The neutral good? Okay. Concordia Pegasus. Uh, it can innately cast a bunch of spells, which for now I won't tell you because, you know, you're not in charge yet. It can fly, of course. And... It can do a lot of interesting things that I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Suffice to say, it's a CR9 as opposed to the CR3 of typical Pegasus. Okay. Uh, next. Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia would like a companion. What time? Um, I'm gonna roll a. I'm gonna roll a d20. Okay. See what happens. Probably a construction. I feel like because you create stuff. Seventeen. Because Sylvia already has a mount. That it's actually. A- it actually did land on construct. <laughs> yeah, let's fucking go. When the dice tell a story. Woo! Yeah, because Sylvia's already got a mount. Her name is Burrito, and she's a little chestnut donkey. It was like she like I imagine that. I know that giving, like, my mount of personality is a big fucking mistake in this game, but, um... Oh, yeah. I imagine that... I imagine that Burrito's personality is the Capybara from Encanto, (laughs) where it's just, like, (laughs) bored and unfazed by everything going on around her at all times. This mule has seen... This donkey has seen things. Cannot be bothered by mortal peril. Well, the nice thing about having a necromancer in the party is that you never have to worry about losing your mount. (laughs) <laughs> so this screams Sarah it's a ball of blades it's exactly what it sounds like except that it's sentient is it a biblically accurate ball of blades no oh. Why can't it's that- a large sphere that opens to reveal an armory's worth of blades that spin and whir and twist Ooh. Can- perfectly fine mount how big is it uh, uh, you wanted this to be a companion, not a mount, so it is medium. Okay. As a can mount, I, like, it would be large sized. Okay, can I like tuck it under my arm and like yes. carry it with me? Okay. When it's your friend, yes. All right, I'm carrying it like I'm carrying it like football style. I'm like, all right, little one, we're going on an adventure here. Hold on, hold on to your knickers. We'll make it small size so you can do that. Kuzma, what type? I guess an ooze companion. I mean, whatever, as long as they look pretty in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> an ooze that looks pretty in a dress. Oh no. Or a suit. I mean, Kuzma's, Kuzma's cool. <laughs> hmm. That seems most appropriate, but. I'm resistant to poison. Does this thing have a CR-30 ooze? Anyways, moving on. Uh, you know what seems a very uh, appropriate to your character? An apocalypse ooze. Sweet. Yeah, that sounds fun. That sounds like that sounds fun at a party. Yes. Uh, it's a, it, looks, it looks like a black ooze. It is currently medium size, so it's as big as you. Uh, you remember the thing from Star Trek The Next Generation that killed Tasha? Yeah, it looks like that. Oh, hot! I mean, cool, cool. <laughs> Rex, you're up. Let's see. Um, do we want it to lean more towards my current patron or towards what is coming? I assume she's asking the party because I, I should not be the one to answer that. Oh, I was asking you, but. Flip a oh. coin. Spoilers. Okay. Flip a coin. Coin, okay. Uh, Fay. Okay. Companion or mount? 
Companion. Companion. Companion mount. Why not both? <laughs> Make it work, Tyler. <laughs> it can just be companion. If that's too hard, it can just be companion. Then I have a very important question once we're uh, once we're all squared away on this. Okay. Yeah. You can ask it now and then I can answer it after. Oh, oh. you're not We're gonna teach you how to say the full word, okay, Tyler. <laughs> How do these things manifest to us? Are they just like, is there like a bag of tricks and we like go elbow deep in it? Or are they like lined up outside the bottle waiting for us or? When you're up, oh, I'll explain that in a second. Okay. Uh, I really feel like it should now be just a bag of tricks that we pull these things out of now though. I'm torn between two, so audience. Any votes, and we will wait a moment for the audience to, to, to uh, decide. Does K get a dire rabbit? Does it have a hand grenade? Perhaps. Or, alternatively, does Faye get it? K get a Cheshire cat? <gasps> oh, Cheshire cat. <laughs> No. Purple tail special or the joke? Audience picks. Do I get displacer kitten? So far, rabbit is winning. <gasps> wait, 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 um, if does it count if Ambrose votes for both? <laughs> no, Ambrose must must choose. I mean, Ambrose like Devin. chose Cheshire Cat. He just said Dire Cheshire Cat. Oh, Dire Cheshire Cat. He also said two lines before Three. Dire Rabbit. Oh. If the Cheshire Cat is Dire, he votes for Cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's four for Kitty and one, two, three, four for fucking ah, Rabbit. Ah. All right. So Ambrose counts as cat. Yeah, so there's four, four and four. four. We need one more person in the audience to vote. Give me kitty. What if the cat hops like a rabbit? <laughs> Spank my Betty, if you're still there, we need you to break the tie. Oh, uh, no. Spank my Betty already voted. Ah. Did he? See it. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. Die rabbit. Voted for die rabbit. Missed it. Bob, break the tie. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, if like, if we could get like a bipedal Cheshire cat that hops, <laughs> that'd be so nice. Oh, okay, get Cheshire the cat it is. Mel broke that tie. Yay, Mel. Okay. A dire rabbit would be cool too, but a Cheshire cat is so iconic. A bipedal hopping cat. Why not both? Perhaps why doesn't Rex day. just get why doesn't Rex just get both a dire rabbit and a cat? Well, then you're gonna have to just get all up in those patrons, huh? Yeah. Patrons are poly, right? We established poly, that last right? session. Yeah. We did, yes. So what happens is when uh the uh, elf and the dwarf go to disappear. They teleport out. And as they disappear, your minders appear one at a time out of the same uh, dimension door that appears momentarily. The ball of blades rolls out first. <gasps> Sylvia, like, she goes like a... <gasps> and, like, covers her hand, like, covers her mouth. And she, like kneels down like she like, gets down like on she like like kneels down she's like come here you come here come on <laughs> bring it in bring it in uh it rolls over to you rolls up rolls down like it's looking you up and down critically uh and you can hear in your mind chuckling when this happens uh three daggers pop out 
right. Before the death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before like the daggers like jut out. She's, she's like, oh, what can it be? Oh, oh, you're feisty. I like you. Put me in a little bugger and like picks it up and like tucks it under her arm. Yes, uh, Ambrose, it is. Next, a pile of sludge splatters all over the floor. And then just bubbles for a minute directly in front of Kuzma before it takes a black bubbly uh, ooze form that is the exact dimensions of Kuzma without the epic hair. And no actual face, just blank. And just looks okay. at you. Kuzma stares at the reflection and then, like, Steve Jobs' face perfection <laughs> <laughs> it nods slowly Damn. at least it has good taste Rex you just hear mm -hmm. chuckling coming from your left shoulder and a faint purring and every now and then what feels suspiciously like the annoying whap of a cattail right in your nose but you can't <laughs> see anything <laughs> I killed some it's, it's Kashek it's Kashek from Welcome to Night Vale <laughs> I like he just without prompting just like scritches towards the left. Um, it doesn't say anything. You just get the chuckling purr continuing. The the whapping speeds up a little though. <laughs> uh, Silverpaw, yours does not appear inside the bar for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was gonna ask, is it a normal size or is it like small? It's large to carry you. Neither does Hineers. This is this is a companion, not a mount. Yeah, it's a companion for Silver Pond, not a mount. It's still a Pegasus, and it could carry you either way. <laughs> oh, looks like one for me, one for you, one for you, and none for you two. Yeah. All right, let's go. I don't need a babysitter. <laughs> well, but how could you say that? And like Sylvia, like walks up to Hanir, like holding the ball of razors, like. Come on, just you with a little peck on the cheek. And Sylvia just feels a gentle push of a mage hand just to the, like her temple, like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, like Sylvia turns around and like, no one sees you the way that I do. All right, let's get this show on the road. I um, bet. Two seconds, I thought you were talking to me and not the blade ball. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to come up with a name for this blade ball. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to call it yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. Trust me. When you exit, <clears throat> uh, both Silverpaw and Hineer instinctively know which is waiting for you. <laughs> the, the eye contact helps, but this is what Hineer sees in the Discord. <laughs> Medium sized at the moment, or large sized at the moment, sorry. And, uh,. Ooh. Where is it? When, when Sylvia sees uh, the dragon, she whispers to the ball, must be compensating for something. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Sylvia like points to the ball like, he said it, not me. And this is what Silver Paw sees without the bridle, without the, without the riding bits. Oh, aren't you a cute little buddy? He's gonna stroke the mane. It looks too softly. imperiously. Perhaps disapprovingly, but you know. <clears throat> Alright, well, uh, buddy, you, you do what you can to keep up, okay? And he'll uh, <laughs> summon his mount. Hop on and ride off towards the little helper. Silverpaw just takes off. What do the rest of you do? Which we'll uh, get back to you in a second, Silverpaw. Well, uh, maybe we should try and do something to stop the uh, the would-be assassins from killing this quarter wretch. So um, maybe try and delay them on their way the, to the bar. I'm going to look around. Do I see any, like, young street urchins or anything like that? 
Well, it's it sounds like some of us want to delay the other group, and some of us want to go find the imp. Because well, uh, we know where the imp is, so <clears throat> just a matter of do we want to protect him or do we want to try and you know delay them from killing him? Well, I'll I'll go with uh, Silverpaw or catch up with Silverpaw to deal with the imp. Um, uh, sounds like you want to do something about the people looking for them. Well, I can. We can certainly use some charm. Uh, over here, Rex and I and uh, Sylvia links like her elbow into Rex's and says, yeah, we and could Rex probably, just we could process. probably do some social damage to slow down their progress to keep them from getting to the bar. We don't know what they know, so we just assume they know nothing or they know everything. They probably know everything. So we should stop them. Oh. Oh, uh, and by the way, Silverpaw's steed is a unicorn, and it's, uh, <laughs> you know, leaving a little glitter path of. Okay. Is it? So it'd be easy to follow. So, yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> I can, um,. I can cast some magic so we can communicate with each other, at least, if we're going to split up. Good enough. Why not both, though? Why don't we just, on our way, create disinformation? I, I don't know how long it takes to create disinformation. Not that long. Do I see any um, young urchins around? Um, Maybe. Hard to tell on this side of the city. They look. There are many creatures that look like young urchin, urchins, but they could just be fake tricksters in disguise. Uh, Hanir steps into. Um, are we outside of our bar? Yes. Okay. Hanir steps back into his bar and steps back out as like his like seedy urchin drug dealer character. He looks. He steps into the phone booth and becomes Superman. <laughs> and then steps back out. He's just like, right. You haven't seen this version of me. Anyway, hi. Still the same person. I'll handle the disinformation. Does um does Henry still have horns? No, he does not. All right. Sylvia kind of like does like a like a, oh. <laughs> and she's like, "What? Where do they go? You can't take them off, can you?" I can alter myself any way I wish, Sylvia. Oh. It's not that hard. And then suddenly, Hanir is standing right before you. Oh, can I do that? And like, <laughs> Sylvia kind of like holds her breath and like concentrates really hard, and nothing happens. <laughs> Rex just. Looks like looks like a mirror right now. That's all right. Maybe, maybe I can't make that happen yet, but we'll get there. I um, have the Eldritch vocation. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I guess maybe spread this information along the way. But I just need you guys there. <sighs> all right. Let's go, little buddy. And I like pick up my ball of blades. Um, did they give us a description of what this murderous adventure party looked like, by the way? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to, I guess, roll perception to keep an eye out for them on our journey. Okay. I'm gonna stick with Hamir. Okay. I get on, um, I get on Burrito, my donkey. Uh, I strap Ball of Blades to my back with my bagpipes. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm gonna head towards, or I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for, I'm gonna wait to see if uh, Kuzma comes with me to head towards the bar and follow Short. the unicorn trail. Short note, names of mounts are in Discord now in the horror fantasy room. Why did you have to pick such a long ass fucking name for my dragon? <laughs> it's a dragon! It's a dragon! It's a I dragon. Don't care. You're lucky it doesn't have a name that's like, and the strong on the wind and the wings as it goes forth through the night and the everlasting stars. <laughs> I mean, like, I that's would, a fucking dragon name. I would prefer that. 
<laughs> well, that's like his nickname. That's probably not even his real dragon name. Yeah. That's like yeah. short. Trianicus like... is what you can call him, so you don't have to say 15 draconic words. I would prefer that. <laughs> uh, I guess my ooze and I get in my carriage. Uh... <laughs> yes, Bimac joins you. Yeah, and uh, the, it's a camel-drawn carriage, and we just go towards the uh, the bar. Like when I open up the back of the carriage, a bunch of you hear a bunch of like from like zombies and shit in there. Um, well, I, I guess we're on our way. And I just put a hand on Hanir's shoulder, and I'm just like, hey, don't worry. hanir has got your back. And I still just look like Hanir. Oh, um, actually, that's a good point. Um, I'm going to do something magical for Sea Urchin Hanir. Um, <laughs> okay. But Rex, if you're going to go with me, you can't be me. There is a reason mm. I have different faces. Don't ruin it. Mm, fine. And Rex will just go back to being Rex. All right. Uh, as uh, as Sylvia is getting on burrito, she looks at uh, she like kind of she like looks to Hanir and then realizes it's not Hanir but Rex. Now she goes, "Hey, you can do this!" And she plays a little dupe for them while she's going off. And I'm going to give them bardic inspiration and cast a moat of potential for an ability check. Mm. Nice, cool. Uh, so. Uh, you basically roll an advantage with your bardic inspiration. Dope. And uh, what level of bardic inspiration? Are you D10 or D? I think I'm D10. Yeah, okay. D10 at level 15. At, at 15, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you guys listen to like, you guys listen to like Sylvia playing like a little do on her bagpipe as she's following the carriage. That's cute. And um, do we want to be able to communicate with each other or are we going to be all right? Uh, I think communicating with each other would be a wise. Okay, I put my hands out for you guys. Mm. I hold his uh, I reach out and I, soft. I take it and I brush my lips against the knuckles. Give it a kiss. Okay. I, I, I grab his little pinky. Okay. <laughs> I got, I, I I got his thumb. I motion for the ooze and one other person in the carriage to come out so, so I can cast a spell on them too. The youth looks at you, and in your mind you hear, I don't think I should hold your hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other person that comes out of the carriage is another me. <laughs> the ooze uh, exudes a pseudopod, which just touches the uh, corner of your jacket, and the lapel starts to smoke. Hey, yeah, don't do that. Don't make it weird. <laughs> don't make it weird. Uh, I, look at my, I look to my shoulder, I'm like, you want to get in on this? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I cast Rari's telepathic bond on us as a ritual. Okay. We just stand holding hands for ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we can communicate with each other telepathically. That's it. That's you just hear like all about that base, about that base. No trouble in Rex's head as he's just like walking along to life. Uh important question for those of you not trying to slow down the other group. You must choose a path to cross the city. The Black Span, the Stone Leg, or the Patron's Path. The Black Span is a northern bridge and is a dark and dangerous place known for its arcane market where one may find some of the world's oddest trinkets. It's run by an alliance of sorcerers and assassins. The Stone Leg, the central bridge, is a haven for those with adventurous appetites. The bazaar at the center is constantly bathed in the sense of cuisines from a hundred walks of life. It's run by a group of rangers. Patron's Path, the southern bridge, at first glance, might seem like the safest option. It's near the great temple, the Scarlet Hearth. The bridge is filled with clerics, mostly preaching against the foul temptations of the warlock life. But don't let your guard down, because this is run by the Thieves' Guild. Okay. No option is safe. Okay. Well, no what's... option is just to scroll across the bridge. They are massive. All right. Uh, I guess Sylvia's question is, um, where are we most likely to run into them? So the map is still accurate. We just reversed the sides. So if you're thinking straight shot, then the middle bridge. But, oh. yeah. but considering this party is anti-warlock, perhaps the anti-warlock bridge. 
So okay. Silver Silverpaw was going straight there. So he was going to take the uh, stone leg. Okay. And uh, with his, what really got for something about my background that was going to be useful on this. Where did I find it? Um, he probably has, you know, given these rangers special, uh, shared his recipes from home. So he might have a little bit of a more friendly time getting across because of that. Are you waiting for anyone else from your group? No, he 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 went. So he was like, lives dangerously. <clears throat> what about the rest of you? Uh, Sylvia is following the carriage because the carriage is probably faster than Burrito and the unicorn. Yes. Oh, okay, then I'm going to take the assassin fruit. Glorious, of course. Oh. Arcane market. How could you not? And what are Rex and Hanir doing? So. Um... Yeah, Rex is following Hanir, wherever Hanir wants to go, because we're going to spread some disinformation, and Rex is sort of used to alter self, so he looks like him, a little bit like himself, but he's definitely like in the same outfit, like dirty urchin kind of street thug style that Hanir is. Uh, Hanir goes to um, one of his... Um, Cedar spots that he goes to do his deals uh, and is maybe looking for a group of not necessarily children but a group of young impressionable folks that can go and spread like wildfire across the city okay Quick note for people not keeping up with chat. Sylvia has decided to name her ball Ball, and the ball <laughs> decides it likes nicknames and would like to go by Al for short. The ball Aww. Al. Aww. Al the ball. Al right. the ball. Right. So my my original intent was um there's a there's a very fun character in a video game I like who her companion is a giant spiky ball. Uh and she calls it the ball, but Al is also good. <laughs> the Al. The okay, Al. No. The Al. The Al. The so Al. You, so you want the street level folks to spread the disinformation. Mm -hmm. Are you paying them to do this? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Money or favors? Mm-hmm. Um, Rex is happy to offer coin. Did they pay us the half money? Of that they said they would? Yep, you all have 7,000 gold. Technically speaking, I have 14,000? Yeah, that would be on top of whatever you already had. Yeah. Um, I, where is it? Oh, pardon me. Bless. <gasps> I'm fine. You okay. I asked for neck. Um, so are you, um, can you dissolve anything? I have not found anything yet that I cannot. Diamond? I can reduce it to its original form and then dissolve that into ash. He means coal. However, the process is not swift. Oh. Interesting. Not for diamond. And when uh, when Vimek touched me, could I tell if it was like an acidic process or some kind of like magical disintegration or? He launches into a scientific diatribe that yes, your wizard understands. Uh, part arcane, part arcane science. <laughs> In no way anything real science. 
And uh, yes, it is supernatural in nature, the process itself, but it is an acidic based process, but also compression. The inside of this creature can super compress, which for some reason makes the diamond process reverse. Don't ask. However, that might be useful for other things. Uh, in here! Yeah? Yeah, what are you doing? Um. In here, um. Had previously, uh, had been carrying a box around. Mm -hmm. Um. And, uh, when he's negotiating. Um, when he's negotiating payment, uh, with these folks, he, like, slides it open, and it's just filled with gold. And they can make a investigation check if they would like. Yes, Rex. Uh, make a willpower saving throw. What? Me? Just do it. Okay. Rex doesn't care about gold. Oh, shit. Uh, natural 20. Yeah. Something's weird about it. For a second, it's gold, and then for another second, it's like see-through gold, and then you realize there's an illusion layered over a box full of copper pieces. Rex rolls his eyes and just pulls out a hundred gold. The street urchins you're talking to, look at Rex, look at Hanir, look at Rex, look at Hanir, and all swarm around Hanir. Because <laughs> Rex is holding a bag, and here is holding a box, and they failed their willpower saving throws. <laughs> you can have the box and this. If... They look at you like you're an idiot. Sure. Keep your pulse what do you want, change, dude? Rex. There are some people looking for an imp. I want them to not find the imp. Do you want these to be people you've never met before, or people you already know in here? Uh, people I already know. Okay. So. Um. These characters are... One second. Billy. Jesse. And B. Okay. Jesse and B are brother and sister. B's the street smart one. Jesse's kind of naive, but has some natural talent as a sorcerer. Mm -hmm. And Jesse's the muscle. He's a roughneck barbarian street kid. You work with him a lot. They're reliable. They get the job done. They don't ask questions. Doesn't not much freaks them out. Jesse's like, is it real gold this time in here? He's yeah. like, shush, even if it isn't. It's more money than we've got right now. Take the box. And you can have a free night's tab on me at the changing tide. Deal, says Jesse and snatches it. B walks up to Rex, looks Rex up mm -hmm. and down, just snags the bag without uh, without a comment, just disappears in B's yeah, jacket. Rex just lets them take it. I wasn't going to try. What's the job in here? There are some adventuring folks that want an imp. I want it more. I want to make sure they don't find it. So whatever information they may be seeking, I want it to be wrong. Tell us about this imp. Belongs to a warlock that passed. His name's Wretch. Describes the imp. Uh, uh B chuckles. Yeah, I know Wretch. So, I need Wretch. The adventurers don't. B looks at Jesse, arches an eyebrow. Jesse says, yeah, I could do that. Concentrates real hard for a minute, and an imp just slowly starts materializing out of thin air. 
At first it looks wrong, though. The nose isn't the right size. The limbs are out of proportion. And she says, shit, it happened again. Concentrates harder, and then it reforms into the right shape as the illusion is complete. Wretch runs off into the streets. The three of them follow. You know, if you're looking to cheat people, you maybe shouldn't use my real name around them. But then again, they seem to know you. <laughs> of course they know me. Does everyone know you? They know this him. But no they one really knows know you, well do enough. they? But they don't Why actually know they? you. Why should they? Why should anyone? Does anyone? No. Why should anyone do anything, Rex? Cheshire cat giggle. For the gram. For the lulls. <laughs> and he just sort of smiles and he's like, I'm gonna figure you out. That's gonna be a fun one for this. Good luck. Haneer turns and just for shits and giggles, um, the dragon's right behind him. <laughs> the dragon is, and there are several other street kids ooing and aahing and petting it. <laughs> and he's like, and there's some people on the other side of the street going, I'm going to have to get used to you, aren't I? Just kind of looks at you. I'm going to have to get used to you. The you feeling like is soot. mutual. Yeah. And you just gives him like a pat and then just <laughs> walks around him. I don't know what dragons smell like, so there's no insults to be had. <laughs> what does raw emerald smell like? That's a good question. <laughs> Somebody tell me in chat. Moving on. Silverpaw. Silverpaw, you are going to take the stone leg, correct? Correct. Okay. All the tents and structures here are white, offering concealment for the white cloaked rangers. Near the center of the bridge, as you begin to cross, built into the south side wall, is an ale house. There is a front patio area enclosed within a short split rail fence where thirsty customers can sit outside in the crisp air to enjoy their drinks and dartboards have been set up along the front walls. As you wander past, keeping an eye out in every direction possible, because you know how rangers like to hunt sometimes. Not every beastmaster is a good beastmaster. Uh, Off-duty legionnaires sitting on the patio start taunting you specifically. making disparaging warlock comments. I can smell the warlock on you. I don't know which ones you've been fucking, but we can smell it. Dirty, dirty fucking bear messing around with the warlocks. Guys, Maybe if we you kill know... you, we'll piss one off. Guys, you know me. I'm Ace. I don't fuck anybody. Come on. Dude. <laughs> like, what is this about? Yeah. Everybody knows that. Prove it. Come play picks and piss with us. I'm assuming that's a game that uh, Silverpaw knows. You have to take shots of ice piss, the local liquor at this bar, while playing darts with ice picks. <sighs> Someone has to stand in front of the dartboard. That, 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 how, uh, you guys are funny. I don't, I don't know how that proves anything. Well, clearly warlocks are cursed in bad luck, and you'll lose if you've been hanging out with them. If you win, then you'll prove us right. Here, we'll up the ante, says a different black legionnaire. And dangles a pendant in front of you in the shape of an hourglass, and another one pulls out a telescope, but short and weird, with multicolored crystals in the end. They scream magic, both of them. Why are you guys carrying around warlock stuff if you're not warlocks? Because we took it off their dead corpses. But then it's useless to you, other than a trophy. Yeah, that's why we're willing to give it to you. 
Come on, one game of pick and piss, silver paw. What did you get for hanging around with warlocks? I, I don't really know that I have time for this. I've got other things to do. The hourglass one gets your attention, though, because you're dealing with time distortions. The other one, you don't know. Because your secondary goal is to stop the actual time fuckery. Well, I suppose uh, I can go for one round. We knew you'd play fair, Silverpaw. Unlike the warlocks you hang out with. This is a five-round game, Silverpaw. <laughs> five character rounds, not drinking rounds, necessarily. Uh, well, yes, you are taking five shots, but it's only it's a very short, fast, uh, intense drinking game. This is like combat turns? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that, we do oppose rolls. First That's round, fine. you slam down the piss, and it does taste like piss. It earns its name. You're handed an ice pick, which, of course, is weighted terribly for using on a dartboard. Uh, is this a normal attack roll, or is this a... Make a con save. From the piss. That's a natural one, um, <laughs> so a, to a total of 12. You have disadvantage on the ice pick roll, which is a dex check. Oh, lovely. Points are equal to the dex check. Four. Luckily, they also had disadvantage. So, however... Uh... Their total is a five. <laughs> they rolled a two. Uh, round one, they're beating you by one point. <laughs> round two. Con save. Uh, this would be a good time to point out that as a... Let me see. Is, was it from my Warhawk or is that... Better with age from my Warlock patron. The longer the battle goes on, the better you feel. The more you feel the flow of the battle improves. Starting on the second turn, you may add plus one to all attacks, checks, and saves. Its effect increase by one up until you are a charisma modifier. I'll allow it. Um, so that one would be a 30. You're winning. That was the Constitution. Oh, yeah, With the advantage? Yep. 19. Uh, or, no, 18. A 16. So yes, you're up by one point now. Round three, con check. Obviously, the con check difficulty gets higher. Because you're getting drunk. Okay. Um, so that is a 29. Okay, advantage again, but they got a natural 20. So we'll see what happens. Sixteen. Okay. Oh wait, advantage? Twenty. Yes. Oh, okay. They're up by two points now in twenty-three. Round four. Ooh. Ooh. Not good for them. Round four, you okay. said? That would be 25. You are up by six points. Final round. They're getting rowdy now. Twenty-six. You easily win. Your reward, they attack you. However, the White Rangers don't like any of this bullshit. They, they just appear out of nowhere and begin attacking you and them. What would you like to do? Defend yourself or try to escape? It's five legionnaires and at least five rangers and everyone is attacking you. Epic. But also attacking each other. It's chaos. Does this continue the, continue the rounds from the game? No, that is over. 
Okay. So you'd reset your power. Um. What's my Pegasus doing? Uh, your Pegasus is off out. So you went up on the patio. It's still in the street, just kind of sitting there, standing there, waiting on you. And, and my unicorn is also standing, waiting on me. Yes. Like they would try to aid if you asked, because the minder is invested in your success. However, this patio is not sized for either of them. I'm gonna ask the, for the uh, Pegasus to make a distraction, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to necessarily run, but I am going to like fight my way through out to the unicorn. Okay, make a strength save and a dex save and a con save. In that order? Yes. If the strength save passes, you're fine. If it fails, you have disadvantage on the deck save. 27. Okay. So it, so regular deck save, same thing. Pass nothing, fail, disadvantage on the con save. What's fail? Uh, 18 or lower. Fail. Okay. That was only a 9. Oh, fuck. Yeah, this is going to be a fail. What was it? That was a con save you said this last one was? Yep. At disadvantage and still an 18? Yep. 16. Oh, close. Okay. So, the Pegasus emits an extremely bright searing light that just blinds everyone in the area. You make your move. Uh, you bear rush, because you're not a bull, two of the uh, legionnaires, and they they and you go tumbling over the side of the patio and towards the street. Uh, however, you don't land on them, they land on you. <laughs> In so doing, they sprain something. You are at half speed. However, you've made it to your nightmare. Your nightmare. Your unicorn. It could be a nightmare unicorn. It could be, yes. That's right. Nice. All right. Um, did I take over, take out rangers or the? You took out two legionnaires, but they're not actually dead. They're just on the ground. But I'm separated, and it's only two instead of ten. Yes, around the rangers are uh, using ranged weapons, but the other three legionnaires are separated from you. Are either of these two the ones that had any of the items? Yes, the one with the trinket is on the ground with you. The, the trinket, the pendant. I'm gonna beat him to take it. Because I won that fair and square. And he is going to pay up and he's going to be a respectful person, whether he likes it or not. Whether. Roll initiative. Meanwhile, Kuzma and Sylvia, almost to the northern bridge, hear the chaos, the telepathic connection. You don't have to do anything about it, but you can hear it. Well, uh, uh, Silverpaw wasn't there when we cast the spell, though. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Never mind. You hear nothing. Everything is fine. Everyone is doing well. Yeah, Would so you get into your initiative? I got a 14. Okay. Kuzma and Sylvia will come back to Silverpaw. Sylvia's chatting with the ball. Who only chats back in your head, not out loud. I'm fine. You make it to the black span. Okay. I mean, mostly what I'm looking for is, um, like, like fine clothing, like dresses, especially that are acid proof. So I'm just going to look around, like, I'm going to get out of the carriage, like, look around, um, like, drag the mech with me, uh, and, like, see what looks good on me in a sense. Uh, and, like, look for something acid-proof. Okay. Shady types everywhere. The stall you find is run by a uh, wrinkled, kindly old-looking halfling lady who could definitely be your grandma. But her eyes and shrewd smile say other things. Uh, oh, yes. Acid-proof clothing. Sonny, I have that for sure. What do you offer in trade? I don't take cash. Looks you up and down. Licks her lips a little. I take favors, though. 
Um, I'm sure you do. Um, well, I have magic. Do you now? Yeah, if you don't take gold. What can your magic do for me? <laughs> well, um, quite a lot, I think. What do you need? Um, can you make me not feel pain? In a sense. Mm, that could be useful. Because when Davos comes around, I might actually take a moment's offer this time. If you can make me not feel pain for a day. A day? I could make you resistant to pain for an hour or so. An hour or so. Perhaps if you can locate Davos for me and stick around while he does his thing. Davos the um, Warlock? Uh. No, Davos is a sorcerer. I do not know him. Um, quick question. What's the name of the dude who died? The dude who died? Savras Dunn. Savras Dunn, okay. Yes. Um, Carry on. Davos is easy to find, and she describes a tiefling to you with very unique horns, one of which is broken in half, one of which is bright white, and the other which, one of which is bright ocean blue. That to stand out. He's always got two dudes with him, too. Not necessarily dudes, but two shadowy cloaked figures with him, too, wearing a robe of many eyes, both of them. So, you know. That would stand out in a crowd. Always here on the span somewhere. And what would you like me to do to this Davos? Bring him here, and I will take his offer. And when he does his thing, you can make me not feel pain. Maybe you could take him up on his offer, too. He pays well. Well. Let us see this clothing. And I wish to strike a deal without seeing what I'm paying for. While he's having this conversation, Sylvia's just kind of like sitting on burrito and she's like drumming her like, she's like drumming the top of Al. She's like, <sighs> and she uses her blow horn like, um, like a horn, like on a car. And she just goes, <laughs> we gotta go, dude. Or sorry, <clears throat> move your ass, we gotta go. Well, unless you can make acid proof clothing, I don't really see, you know, what we're rushing around for. All oh, right, all right. Uh, Sylvia is gonna like guide Burrito around the wagon. Like, all right, I'll catch up with you later then. Oh, I thought you were gonna make some massive proof clothing. That was disappointing. I mean, I could, <laughs> but after we get paid. You examine the acid proof clothing. Do you burn a slut spell slot and or do a ritual for identify? Oh, I don't even know how long Identify takes to cast of the ritual. Ten minutes is a ritual. Ten minutes. Um, oh, I, I could actually make acid-proof clothing because I, I know fabricate. I know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoops. Actually, I might have an acid cantrip. I do! Acid splash! Okay, so I, like, form a ball of acid in my hand and, like, throw it at the clothes. It just hits it like water and runs off. Oh, interesting. And is it pretty? Oh, yes. It is what you think pretty is, anyways. Oh, okay. So something I'd wear. All right. Um, very well. What I can offer you is... Um, if this Davos person is going to hurt you, I can make sure that it doesn't kill you. That's about all I can say. I'm sure it might still hurt, though. Well, it never kills anyone. It's the pain that's the problem. No, 
Uh, there's not much I can do about pain. What about Sylvia? Sylvia uh, hears like the pain thing and she like stops uh, Burrito. She turns around and goes, I might be able to help a little bit. If you'd like, like to hear a song while he's, you know, doing his thing. If it will make me not notice the pain, yes. But, um, would anything like prestidigitation um, <laughs> uh, help or maybe like some cure wounds or some uh, mislead? Oh, not mislead. That wouldn't do it. But hold on one second. I could heal a bitch. Also, is the can the dress be purple or green by chance? <laughs> yes, whichever one you want, or both. Both. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. Maybe like green with purple highlights. Perfect. On one second there, Sylvia. Sure. Let's say if um if I wanted to like make acid proof clothing, um would I need a like scrap of acid proof cloth first to like cast the spell? Yes. Or similar, something a piece of something acid proof. Wouldn't have to be cloth, it could be a creature. Okay. A creature, you say. Um so well, I could I could like I could just like cut off like a bit of the hem from the dress or from the outfit that he bought and cast fabricate that way. Yes. Yeah. Um. My dress. What did you take? For your um, seventh what? level spells. For my seventh level spells. Uh, <laughs> uh, I took mass cure wounds, uh, heal, force cage, chain lightning. Uh, a resurrection. Yeah. You could use that heal to prevent pain. Okay. If you just want to go that route and not try to fabricate yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'll just, yeah, I'll just, I'll just cast heal on her. Um, uh, tell me, Darlin, when does this, uh, when does this gentleman of yours come round? Right now, as a matter of fact. And you well, see... it seems you guys have this handled, so I go back to the carriage while she takes care of everything. All right. Ah! You see, clearly, the tiefling in question in his robe of many eyes wearing associates approach you. And he tells her, yes. Same deal as always. And she accepts this time. And the deal you overhear, Sylvia, is he wants to buy a body part from her. And replace it with something. An eye, an right. ear, a hand. Whatever. Okay. Uh, Sylvia will, like, gulp when she hears it. But um, after she, like, makes, like, the agreement, um, Sylvia will offer to, like, hold the woman's hand while he takes the body part. Okay. She offers an eye, and he smiles and says, excellent. And sets to work removing her eye. It is magical, and it is a ritual, but it also involves a spoon. So, uh -huh. what's up, Kuzma? I said an eye for his robe. <laughs> uh, when he's done and the heal spell prevents the pain, he replaces it with a ruby. All right. Yeah, like while he's doing it, like she's like humming a song uh, and like she's like not playing, she's not playing her bagpipes, so she's like pressing like the keys on her pipe while she's humming. I mean, either would work because with the bagpipes, she wouldn't even notice the eye being removed. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's true, but you know, Sylvia's a little uncomfortable right now, so. Uh. Sylvia's, Sylvia's a little wigged out, but uh, yeah, she like she like hums like she hums like a tune, and um, it like you know it like numbs the pain or whatever it does. When he's done, the gem shimmers and slowly turns into what looks like a matching eyeball, even though it's slightly bigger than the other one. She gasps and says, I can see everything. As he replaces her eye with a gem of true seeing. Hmm. And Sylvie so goes, oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it really brings out the color of your um complexion. Good you for you. Anything you'd be willing to sell, my dear, says creepy guy to Sylvia. Sylvia, like, looks herself up and down and goes, uh, no, I, uh, I actually like myself the way I am. All right. If you ever change your mind, you know where to find me. I do? I mean, yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be sure to hit you up and I'll pass your name along to my other friends because, you know, they're always looking for self-improvement. Can't get enough of it these days. Are you coming or are you just going to jaw on the bridge all day? Have a lovely rest of your day, friends. Come on, ball. You walk away with the dress, Sylvia. Well, not necessarily the dress, the outfit. Whatever Kuzma wants it to be. Yeah. As you get I'll in the like cart, it. you think you overhear Davos say, she had such lovely eyes. And Kuzma, uh -huh. you don't hear anything, but you notice the, the really intense, creepy way he's staring at her. I'm sure that won't come back to haunt you later. Yeah, uh, yeah. I get on burrito, and I'm like, all right, all right, all right, gal, let's get it moving. Okay. I show the address to the neck. Uh, he squelches, and you are on your way. <laughs> and that is where we pause this session until next week, when we will reunite the party. Woo! I'm, I'm sure Sylvia will end this game with all of her eyes. Oh, of course. Yes. This one. <laughs> Definitely not going to turn into a Jeepers Creepers situation. Hanir will end this game spending as little money as possible. Yes, you will. Rex is disgusted. <laughs> I need it for other things. <sighs> then just let me pay. Hot tiefling shit. I'm going to get that ooze in that dress. <laughs> <laughs> if yes, the you pay, look very fine. then they'll expect me to pay. It's not a good business. Because she got the gem of true seeing, she even throws in boots and gloves. Ooh. Oh, okay. Ooh. As the curtain drops and our performers take their bows, we wish you a good evening and hope you'll return to experience the rest of our grand opera with us. But until next week, there are many other fine performances our dear patron Vorpal Tales can provide you with. On Mondays, experience the Curse of Strahd revamped at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by Solemn Veil at 11. On Tuesdays, Dark Sun 5e Session 0 this week at 7. On Wednesdays, uh, Session 0 of our new Starfinder campaign at 8. On Thursdays, Belial's Brood and Vampire the Requiem meets its finale. I'm sure everything will go swimmingly. And then at 9, Punch Scum and Villainy with the Defenders of Tomorrow and Savage Worlds. On Fridays at 7, Masks of Nyar Lithotep, followed by Cult Divinity Lost at 11. On Saturdays at 7, Pathfinder 2E, Reign of Winter, followed, of course, by this grand aria. And finally, on Sundays at 9, Mage the Ascension, White Walls, Season 2. You can find me next running that tomorrow, and also in a uh, charity one-shot playing Warhammer, Wrath and Glory, which I you know, will let Savannah tell you all about. Come see... Uh, how the story uh, continues for White Walls. And now, dear uh, divas and devos, tell the audience who you are and where you can be found in our show and what else you do outside of it. Uh, hello, I am Savannah. You can find me on the interwebs at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Um, tomorrow, you can find both myself Eldritch Echoes, and several others from Vorpal Tales uh, with the Drunken Storyteller, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, we will be playing Wrath and Glory for Roll for Ukraine. Um, that evening, you can also find me for uh, Mage Ascension White Walls, uh, season two for my Where 
Tiger Roxy. And then on Monday, you can find me for Curse of Strahd, uh, followed by Solemn Vale. Find bullets. Uh, hello, I am Salubri. Uh, I was playing Sylvia Quarrel, the not dead, just dumb TM bard. Uh, you may find me at Salubri underscore NA on Twitter and on Twitch, where I play a bunch of shitty games like Dead by Daylight and League of Legends, and I geek out over the lore for both of them. I'm also a writer for Vampire the Masquerade. If you are interested, we just published a book about a month ago. Go buy it if you didn't already. It's a really great support us. Um, I'll be back here next Saturday, uh, reprising my role as Sylvia. Uh, and in the future, I will be playing in playing. I will be running uh, a Patreon exclusive Dungeons and Dragons homebrew set in the League of Legends universe uh, with most of these uh, people as my lucky victims. So tune into that if you're a Patreon uh, exclusive member. Is that me? Yeah, it's you. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Calvin Khalil. Uh, everyone calls me Moon. I was playing um, uh, Kuzma. Volodymyr, the Necromancer. Um, you can find me here uh, on Thursdays uh, playing Blau's Brood and Superheroes. Uh, and I play and write Vampire the Masquerade as well. And yeah, we, you can find uh, our books on the Storyteller's Vault, uh, the Black Hand playing spot. Um, see you, well, oh, geez, next week. I am Zachary Naldre, he, him. Uh, so the next time that you'll see me on this channel is going to be you know, next Saturday for this game. But, but if you want to see me before then, uh, on Wednesday over on McStabber Studios, I'm going to be playing Bro Hunters at 8 p.m. Eastern. Five Pacific. <laughs>